it's Hordak's Harry Henchman. Here's a look at the new Mattel Master Universe Masterverse Princess of Power Grizzlore. Fewer feared across Eternia more than the bloodthirsty beast Grizzlor. Captured and brainwashed by Hordak, Grizzlor now loyally serves the leader of the evil Horde as gatekeeper of the Fright Zone, as well as a feral soldier to be unleashed in the battlefield. I think the only thing frightful about the Fright Zone is the fact that it's covered in fleas. Before we get a closer look at the brand new Mattel Mass Universe Masterverse Princess of Power Grizzlor, let's grab the old tape measure, the old tape measure, and see how tall the figure stands. Grizzlor, in this case, stands about six and three quarters of an inch in height, or the figure's 17 centimeters tall. As for figures, I'm sure we can bring in a few. Here's some other Horde members to go along with Grizzlor. First, the already looked at Shadow Weaver. Here's what the figure also looks like. Let's just move her over here. Katra. Katra always seems to have a problem for me when it comes to her standing. Something about her ankles. Uh, speaking of ankles, here's what the figure looks like with a figure that has quite large ankles. Uh, Hordak. And of course, we can also bring in Shira as well. Now, you're probably asking yourself, why did you, why, reviewer, did you group everything over here? What's, what about the space on this side? Well, this space is actually going to be set aside for other figures from this wave. Here's what the figure looks like with the most recent, I suppose, looked at Buzzsaw. Here's what the figure also looks like with Faker. Still not happy with the way that the paint is on this guy. Let's just get him in proper frame. And the other figure, of course, that we also had a look at that did make up this wave. Here's what the figure also looks like. Maybe not necessarily Princess of Power, but at least the Revelation Merman. Grizzlow's accessories will include a double-sided axe. Identifying, of course, the fact that he works for the Horde, you can see it does have the Horde symbol there, both on the front and on the back. It looks exactly the same on both the sides. It's molded quite nicely here in a metallic silver. The silver axe can be held in either one of his existing hands, or what you can also do as well if you flip Grizzlor around to the back, he does have a holstered section. Let's not drop his head in the process. He does have a holstered section that for all intents and purposes, you should be able to take the axe and fit it on the back. But I find like the loop isn't big enough. So you may want to have to even heat this up a little bit bigger in order to accommodate the axe being held inside. It does fit in there, but like I said, the quarters are tw quite, quite tight. Uh, the other thing about the figure is the fact that he does have, let's just put the head back in place. The reasoning not is not necessarily the fact that the figure has a loose head. Actually, I was trying to earlier take the head sculpt off because I did also want to show you guys that the fur is removable. I don't know why I had to make that sound. The figure also comes included with this really cool Cyclops crossbow. Cyclops in the sense that there's a singular eye on the front. I really like the metallic green that they've used here, as well as the additional translucent red that they've used for the flames. I would imagine that this is probably going to be getting used for Leech. I think if it, if it hasn't already been announced, Mattel is probably planning to do a Leech of this larger scale. I think I've actually seen images of a Leech. And I would imagine that the crossbow that's going to come included with that figure is going to be very similar to the one that gets packed along here with Grizzlor. Being that there isn't necessarily a handle that he's going to hold on to, what it is instead is it's a clip. So you're just going to clip it literally onto his wrist and Grizzlor can hold it that way. Uh, the figure also comes included with a couple of swappable hands. Gripping hands already are in the sockets of the forearms, but if you wanted to, the, fist do the figure does have a punching fist, nicely additional painted thumbnail, and the figure also has what I would always best describe as mauling hands. Not hands plural, hand singular. And either one, of course, of these can just be popped off easily. But considering that the figure already has, like, an axe, hmm... And the fact that the figure also has a crossbow. Hmm. I would imagine, at least for me at least, I'm going to be displaying the figure with both gripping hands and just doing away completely with the other hands that get packed along with him. As already mentioned, let's go ahead and remove the crossbow right now. For all intents and purposes, you can remove the fur that he has on the front of his body. Doing away, of course, with the name that he's going to be called Grizzlor. He's not going to be as fuzzy, grizzly-like, of course, if you are going to be removing the fur. But it is feasible. It's possible. You're just going to, first of all, pop the head off here. You can remove the straps on the back of his shoulder of his torso armor. Just detach them on both sides. One side I had a little harder of a time to remove, but you're going to just literally remove these. And then you're just going to take the fur piece off. If you had a friend, for example, that's a little thinning in the hair, I suppose you probably could give it to him as a toupee. But yeah, it's possible if you wanted to, you could remove the fur. For me, though, I'm a little disappointed in the fact that the figure does not come include with fur on his forehead, as that's one of the other things that is the calling card for Grizzlor. 
Let's go ahead right now, pop the head back in place. We're obviously going to be talking about the head more in a moment. There we go. I didn't have it completely snapped in place. And let's go ahead just and strap everything back in because I'd hate to think that his hair piece is going to be falling off. That would be very awkward. But let's go ahead right now, just strap everything back in place. I will say at least I am happy that he has something on him that's furry and not all of it was just replicated in plastic. As Grizzlor, much like Beastman and really much like Mossman, really should always have, I think, an actual material that they've used for it. Again, I'm a little disappointed the fact that his head had to rely on sculpted plastic rather than actually just doing and using the fur. I think Beastman also had a similar thing as well. He had faux fur, but then of course he had a plastic sculpted head. The head for what it is, is good. I think they've nicely done the hair, at least on top of his head, and the face sculpt is really quite good here for Grizzlor. My only real, again, disappointment is the fact that they had to go plastic up here and then they used fur for the rest of his body. Now, you could say that his furry body would have nothing to do with the hair that he has on his head. I perhaps may disagree with that, but I will say at least for what it is, I'm glad they at least sculpted a fairly decent head sculpt with well-sculpted well hair. I just wish, again, it would have been using more of this. The eyes are well-painted. You can see that they've done these nicely in a brighter yellow. He seems to have sort of a unibrow thing going on. He looks like he's part Klingon. He does have really long fangs, all the better to bite you with. And overall, again, like the paint on the front of his face is really good. It's a little harder, of course, to see. Actually, it's a lot easier to see now that I fixed the front of his torso armor. But he does have, of course, the sported uh, horde logo there on the front of his chest, brightly handled here in a red. And again, like the material that they've used, the faux fur that they've used for his body does look good. No real faults with that. I just wish, again, it was in other places as well. For places that don't actually have the faux fur, they've what they've done instead essentially is just sculpted the fur onto his body. So all the things on his limbs, at least, his forearms have it, his legs have it, and I think it's the same fur that they probably would have used also as well for Beastman. I can't imagine that they would have changed anything different for that. If we lift up what fur he has, you can see he does sport a, a really interesting loincloth with a, I really like the way they've sculpted the belt. I don't know why, it reminds me of Hercules. Remember the old cartoon of Hercules? Even though it has nothing to do with an H, it kind of does look a little like the Hercules logo, but again, like it's all molded here in black plastic. And then down below again, like just again to let everybody know that this guy belongs to the Horde, he does also have Horde boots. I don't know if imagine, I don't know if they would be a one size fits all, considering that Hordak has a lot of cronies of various sizes and builds. For the articulation on Grizzlor, going back to, once again, his head sculpt, head is going to be a little bit more limited, not just because he has all this additional fur, but, but by the way they've also sculpted the hair, it's going to be having a harder time to kind of get around, especially this section of his shoulders here, where his armor is. It's hard to kind of get the head around that. Head looks up only by that far. It also looks down only by that much, and you can rock it back and forth, but I know it's one of those blink-and-you-miss-it moments. That's as far as you can actually do with Grizzlor's head. As for his arms, his arms aren't as limited as head sculpt. You can bring the arms out. He actually does have also a bicep a strap. So I did want to mention that also as well. And there is a horde symbol there as well. wanted to point that out. But the figure does have a swivel in his bicep. He does have a double hinge. All the still the same on the, on the biceps, on the elbows, I should say. And the hands rotate also all the way around. It's a little harder to get to kind of everything that's underneath. But the figure does also have a ball joint at the top of his torso. And he also has a secondary ball joint at the base of his abdomen. Legs split out on Grizzlor. And you can take the legs and, of course, move them forward. You can move them back. About three quarters of the way, get the, yeah, the way arm. About three quarters of the way up the thigh, there's a swivel cut. So you can swivel the leg all the way around. Figure has a double hinge on the knee, one and two. Has articulation in the boot, more from the way it's been assembled. And the figure does also have a hinge joint up and down this way and an ankle rocker this way as well. Good figure. I like I like the look of Grizzlor. Uh, again, uh, not to keep stating the, the same things again and again, but I am a little bummed out by the fact that they didn't find a way to use like sort of the foam fur, fur material on his head as well. At least, at the very least, if they couldn't, obviously, for just because, again, like the pr producing cost of putting the figure together and sculpting the hair with the fur, if that's something that Mattel wasn't able to do just for cost-saving measures, I wish that instead what they would have done is maybe not made the hair as shiny on his head. If they had dulled it down maybe to the color that he would have had for the fur, then at least, at the very least, if they were still using a plastic head sculpt, it would have looked a little bit more seamless to the rest of his body. And of course, bringing in the rest of the members of the Horde, fixing Shadow Weaver's sleeve already mentioned in the earlier review. But yeah, we're doing getting a good cast of characters. The only thing I'm really looking forward to the most, I guess there is also, uh, 
Was it Mechanek? No, it's not Mechanek. Who's the other character? The one that had the big googly eyes. It'll come to me in a second. But I'm also really looking forward to Leech. Leech was always a character I thought looked really cool as a figure, and I would love to see what they could do. Approaching Leech in a 7-inch scale like we're getting with all the figures so far. Yes, the other figures I was thinking of was Mantena and Modulok. And while I think Modulok would be a difficult figure to translate to a Masterverse line, easily I could see Mantena getting released at some point by the folks over at Mattel. Going though back to Grizzlor, I think one of the other things that I really missed by the fact that the figure doesn't have real fur on his head is that Grizzlor was always known for a really spiky hair pair piece. He had as much fur on the top of his head as he seemed to have for the rest of his body. And by kind of doing away with that, it kind of makes his face look so more bland, like it doesn't have as much of the personality. Head sculpt sculpted nicely, but without all that additional faux fur that he has on top of his head, he kind of actually looks more just like a, a primitive caveman than the true Grizzlor that I really remember as a kid. The rest of the body is good. I would imagine they're probably using a lot of the same body components as the Beastman. Maybe not that we looked at before, because I've still yet to pick up the Masterverse Beastman. I'm sure I will at some point. I do like the way that this one turned out. He's just sort of lacking a little bit, if that makes any sense. What do you guys think of Grizzlor? Let me know down below in the comment section. Have you had the chance to pick up this figure for yourself? And also, let me know down below in the comment section, are you glad that they used a sculpted plastic hairpiece for his head? Or, like me, if you would have preferred to have faux fur instead? Let me know down below in the comments section. Also as well, if you guys haven't had any luck to find Grizzlor in the wild, uh, let's see what I did there, you can also click the link down below in the video description. That will, of course, take you on over to Entertainment Earth's website. That's where I actually, in fact, found this entire wave at a pretty good price too. I ordered it and it shipped right away. I feel like it shipped within about a week, week and a half, and it was already at my door. But yeah, if you wanted to click the link down below, that will not only take you over to the Masterverse listings, but then anything that's on the site that's in stock right now, using that provided link, will also take you 10% off anything, anything at all that you see on their site that's in stock. So of course, if you want to do some additional shopping, above and beyond picking up Grizzler for your collection. If you guys enjoyed this video, you want to hit with a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and certainly do want to stick around for more, some sad news to report is that we don't have really any new master stuff to look at. I have yet at least to pick up some additional pieces. So for right now, at least, we may have to cut things short when it comes to Master Universe stuff. But rest assured, more will be coming your way. Of course, as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.